Halo, selamat datang di channel ini, salam sejahtera untuk semuanya. Kali ini kita akan reaksi, pemberitaan oleh media asing, tentang perkembangan pesat perekonomian Indonesia, yang merupakan sebuah pengakuan penting dan membanggakan, terhadap kemajuan yang telah dicapai oleh negara ini. Mengingat latar belakang sejarah Indonesia yang kelam, pasca kemerdekaan pada tahun 1945, di mana negara ini harus berjuang keras untuk memulihkan ekonominya dari kerusakan akibat penjajahan. When thinking of Asian superpowers, people automatically think of Japan, Korea, and China. But shocking to most, one of the highest ranked economies in Asia is actually Indonesia. Located between the continents of Greater Asia and Australia, as well as between the Indian and Pacific Oceans, Indonesia has been dubbed the Emerald of the Equator. The beauty and power of this overlooked country now boasts to be a shining example of what a true hidden gem can achieve. In this video, we'll go over Indonesia, its quickly growing economy and its huge potential to become one of the world's strongest and most surprising forces in the world. It's easy to understand why Indonesia is often overlooked regarding ranking economies. It's a Southeast Asian country that has been colonized by Westerners, the Portuguese, the Dutch, the Germans, and the British. Colonized countries tend to have weaker economies due to their need to recover from their losses during colonization. Naturally, Indonesia had to recuperate its losses from all the years under foreign rule. From its year of independence in 1945 until before the introduction of the new order in the 1960s, Indonesia's economy was deplorable, to say the least. The colonization of foreign forces heavily impaired Indonesia's production and export of rubber and oil. Following this, Indonesia's attempt to quickly repair economic conditions was macroeconomic solutions while ignoring microeconomic problems, resulting in inflation, poverty, and hunger. Fortunately, the years after the 1960s were the turning point. The New Order administration, led by then-President Suharto, was put into effect and stabilized the currency, decreased inflation, and attracted foreign aid and investment. They solely focused on revitalizing the economy while enforcing strict laws which improved the country's overall organization. The reforms in the country's policies in the 1980s resulted in an even better rise in the economy. In fact, from 1989 to 1997, Indonesia's economy was growing at an amazing rate of 7% during this time frame. While the 1997 Asian financial crisis didn't spare Indonesia, the country was quick to its feet and continued its economic growth. While Indonesia's GDP has seen Ketika media asing membahas tentang pertumbuhan ekonomi Indonesia, itu bukan hanya sekedar angka. Mereka sebenarnya sedang mengakui bagaimana Indonesia berhasil mengatasi masa lalunya yang berat dan sekarang menjadi salah satu negara dengan ekonomi kuat di Asia. Their economy performing well. Manufacturing is the biggest contributor to Indonesia's economy, which is responsible for around 20% of the country's GDP. Textiles and garments, food and beverages, electronics, automotive, and chemicals are the most mass-manufactured industries in Indonesia. In fact, Indonesia is currently the 10th largest manufacturing nation in the world. In addition, Manufacturing employs one-fifth of Indonesia's working age, employing about 25 million workers. With the current rate of manufacturing and production resulting in an average of 4% annual growth, coupled with the government's plan to further enhance current rates, Indonesia has a high chance of entering the world's top 10 economies through manufacturing alone. Despite the success of their manufacturing sector, agriculture still makes up a huge chunk of the country's economy, 
making up around 14.43% of the country's economy. Indonesia produces a whole bevy of products and commodities, the most prominent being rice, cassava, tapioca, peanuts, natural rubber, cocoa, coffee, palm oil, copra, poultry, beef, pork, and eggs. Palm oil especially is very vital to Indonesia's agriculture and economy, as Indonesia is the biggest producer of palm oil in the world producing half of the world's palm oil supply. Other sectors that contribute to Indonesia's economic growth include the oil and mining industry. Indonesia is the biggest producer of nickel and the second biggest producer of cobalt in 2022. While a lot of Indonesia's economic success is attributed to laws, politics, as well as the previous and current administration's governance, Geographic, political, and geopolitical features also lend themselves to Indonesia's success. Geographically, Indonesia is in a very good location. As mentioned earlier, Indonesia sits right between Greater Asia and Australia, as well as the Indian and Pacific Oceans, making Indonesia a sensible trade route for surrounding countries. As the largest archipelagic country in the world, it only makes sense that Indonesia capitalizes on its own geostrategic advantages by establishing itself as the world's maritime axis. Despite being a great contender for being a maritime center, Indonesia isn't making strides to make itself a maritime country due to current trading routes. Kemajuan perekonomian Indonesia disebabkan dari kinerja baik dari berbagai sektor perekonomian, terutama di bidang industri dan pertanian. Ini membuat Indonesia dikenal sebagai negara manufaktur besar dan produsen utama komoditas global seperti minyak sawit. Dengan letak strategis dan diversifikasi ekonomi, Indonesia berpotensi besar dalam perekonomian dunia. As a top Asian superpower, is the fact that Indonesia is the de facto leader of ASEAN, ASEAN, which is the association of Southeast Asian nations. Indonesia is a founding member of ASEAN, which was established in 1967. This entails a political and economic union of all 10 participating countries, Brunei, Cambodia, Indonesia, Laos, Malaysia, Myanmar, Philippines, Singapore, Thailand, and Vietnam, which promises to accelerate economic growth through the help of one another, while also maintaining peace and stability between each nation. Indonesia is also a member of APEC, or the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation, an intergovernmental forum that consists of Asian countries as well as other countries surrounding the Pacific Ocean, such as Australia, New Zealand, Papua New Guinea, Peru, and the United States, among many other countries. APEC promotes the free trade of products between APEC members, which allows trading of agricultural products and raw materials. APEC is also considered one of the highest level multilateral blocks and the oldest forums in the Asia-Pacific region. Because of Indonesia's rising potential to become a superpower, as well as its strategic geographic location, established superpowers like China and the United States are both seeking to strengthen their continued relationship with Indonesia. While Indonesia remains neutral about the China-United States feud, Lowy Institute's 2021 poll reveals that Indonesians find the United States more important than China for Indonesia's economy, with 18% voting for the United States compared to 14% voting for China. Additionally, 4 in 10 Indonesians prefer investments from the United States compared to 3 in 10 from China. As it stands, Indonesia remains neutral and has no bias to where it sides though the interest of the two most powerful nations in the world shows how important Indonesia is 
causing a cascading effect of foreign investors to be more attracted to Indonesia. Indonesia had a roaring 2022, with an economic boom of 5.3%, the highest since 2013, and it looks like the country's economic streak has no end in sight. Indonesia remains the world's top producer of nickel and palm oil, and the second best to many other products. While the Indonesian government states that 2023 might not be as strong of an increase like 2022, the government is still positive that a 5% increase is possible for 2023. Indonesia is still on track to fulfilling its 20-year RPGMN plan in hopes of fully realizing the goal of the plan, with outlooks looking positive given the current state of the growth of the country's economy. Needless to say, Indonesia has earned its rightful place at the top spot of the Asian economy rankings and is headed to be one of the top 10 economies not just in Asia, but across the whole world as well. Berita-berita positif ini tidak hanya membuat Indonesia terlihat lebih baik di mata dunia, tapi juga bisa membuat lebih banyak investor dari negara lain tertarik untuk menanamkan uangnya di Indonesia. Ini berarti bisa ada lebih banyak kesempatan untuk Indonesia tumbuh lebih jauh lagi. Pesannya adalah, dengan pemimpin yang bijak dan kebijakan yang tepat, negara yang pernah mengalami masa sulit, seperti penjajahan dan krisis ekonomi bisa bangkit dan sukses di tingkat global. Jadi, semua cerita positif tentang ekonomi Indonesia ini, sebenarnya adalah bukti, bahwa Indonesia telah maju jauh dan bisa menjadi contoh bagi negara lain yang punya sejarah serupa untuk terus berjuang demi kemajuan ekonomi dan kehidupan yang lebih baik bagi rakyatnya.